during Dragon Ball Daima episode 2, Goku was struggling with his range when training. What did he then go out and search for? The correct answer is power pole and the bonus is the nyoibo oh uh, okay see i forgot the japanese name see i just called it that stick do you even call it the power pole oh nope. you call it that stick that stick you're incorrect <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that good <laughs> yo <laughs> it's your boys <laughs> yo, brother ooch <laughs> It's more of a time, JD! It's me! And we are the Full Power A Podcast! Let's go! We're here! Yes! Back again, once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite podcast, in case you didn't know. We're letting you know your favorite podcast out here, the realest podcast, because not only do we talk about anime, but we talk about anime unlike any of these other shows out here. OK, I have to really stop cursing so soon because then I make that's more work on me because then I have to freaking go in and like cut them out. Because funny enough, fun fact, that's a YouTube thing. You do bet your video does better when you don't have any curses. So so early on in the video. So that's weird. Yeah, it is weird, but food for thought. So, anyways, brother Ooch, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. You know, chill day, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just work. Yeah. Went by pretty quick, then went to school. Okay, nice. Came back. Oh, so funny thing, right? All right. So, so again, this is, <clears throat> this is, I feel like consistent because last time we talked about school for you, you are low key taking over our other brother's gimmick, which is IQ. Brother Uch is becoming the new IQ, so shout outs. <laughs> My man got a B in his f test. See, I did it again. Fucking jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what well, you said, microeconomics, right? Yeah. Yeah, see? See? Sh see? This is, I say this all the time, JD. I believe firmly, not just in anime, but in life, the previous generations are meant to surpass the ones that yes. came before them, okay? And I'm totally okay. See, you're lucky that i'm the kind of brother that i don't be getting jealous or mad i'll be i'm proud you know what i'm saying i'm like because bro when i had microeconomics i had i was singing that soldier boy song throw some d's on that yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> nah, i mean i don't blame you though because that, that can be difficult because yeah. it's like i mean because i'm an intermediate yeah thank god that's the last thing i have to have to take yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't yeah. even think i needed to take intermediate but i'm in it and they it utilizes like pre-calc a bit mm. and i mm. hated calc <laughs> oh facts yeah. same so you know but as uh the mind grows i guess <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i like that yeah, as the yeah, mind yeah. grows as you get older it starts to click a little bit easier i guess so. all right shout out shout out shout out all right so jd how you doing today sir welcome back of, of course yeah it's been a, it's been a little bit you know uh i've been working as well we got a lot of stuff going on at my job um that i can't talk about obviously of course but it is both like exciting and stressful at the same time mm -hmm. but just you know i guess i'll just say this like i'm trying my best to make things happen for people <laughs> or not, not, not isaac not isaac yeah right? i mean he, he <laughs> him too is pro him probably more so than anyone because he's the one who cares the most yeah um but yeah uh so we'll, we'll see how that goes otherwise um I've been obsessed with Sparking Zero. Hey man, I don't know if, we're, if or when we're gonna talk about it, but I think uh, according to my PS5, my home PS5, I have 103 hours in the game already. Man, I'm, I'm I don't, jealous. That's grind. I don't, I don't know how accurate that is, and mm. I will also say some of that is like idle time or right, 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 gr grinding for Dragon Balls. But like, I've been playing this game a lot, clearly. So uh, <laughs> Makes sense. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. All we'll right, talk about sure, it. sure, sure. Yeah. So I mean, I guess that's a good little warm up of, outside of let me just pay the bills really quick, guys. Patreon, okay. If you want us not only on Fridays, if you want us on Mondays, and if you want us on whenever day is most consistent or available for you, please go ahead and support the boys because we're trying to make this full time. We're trying to go full power out of control, as the slogan states. 
patreon.com forward slash full power podcast. You get your extra content behind the scenes, all the exclusives and much more. Um, I will be showing another clip of the commies cookout that brother Uch and I got done filming already. So uh, we're going to be um, produce. I'm, I'm going to be in the production booth getting that one done. So make sure you guys are tuning into the Patreon and as always, um, I, and I always forget to mention this, but for those that are members on the Patreon page, you guys have access to an exclusive Discord. So if you guys are trying to interact with us on a more frequent basis outside of just socials, then definitely join the Patreon. You'll have that access link to the Discord, and that way you can interact with us. You can talk to JD about Sparking Zero, share tech with Sparking Zero. Um, we already got, like, yo, Lord Payne, he was, uh -huh. he, he was literally in there chatting it up talking sparking zero and then matter of fact on my way to work he was in the voice chat and i just popped right in there yeah. and i was like yo what's good Lord? so we were chatting it up so again guys like more interaction all that fun stuff and you guys get priority on whenever we do question of the day which of course we'll be getting into and i'll be going over your responses first before i look at anywhere when anyone else's that may have responded on like Instagram, on YouTube, and all that kind of stuff. And speaking of which, make sure you guys, as always, are liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, because the engagement definitely helps. We're trying to get all your energy, you know what I'm saying, on some Goku shit, you know what I'm saying, for that spirit Genki bomb, Dama. that Genki Dama. Let's go. So as a little warm-up uh, discussion before we do get into the questions of the day, because JD did bring it up, Sparky Zero, right? Let me tell you something. I'm going to start this conversation off by saying, and I don't know how you feel about this, but this is a point of conversation. I think, based on how much people love this game and how much people are playing this game and how excited people are for this game in general, the fact that I can say, after not even a month of this game being out, that I've already commentated top eight competitive play, this game needs to be at EVO. 100% needs to be at EVO. So, JD, I want your thoughts on that. What Do, do you think I'm fucking crazy or out of my mind or what's going on? <laughs> do I think... Okay, I, I would love to see some kind of representation at EVO in some kind of way. Uh-huh. I don't know if it should be a main game, but it mm. should get like a, like a high... Like, you know, if they did like a... a, a like a major side tournament kind of deal. Okay. where Or, or like... um like a top eight exhibition or like an exhibition even right like mm. you know how they do those those big exhibition kind of things uh -huh. and the, the only reason i say that is because the game is still not meant to be competitive and there's still a lot that i feel like the the, the general fgc is not gonna understand about how it works okay that's fair so it's it's gonna be one of those things that's a hard sell you okay know? but but at the same time like would I personally be interested? Yes, because mm. I do think it is fun to watch. Um, but again, like it kind of depends because like the, the the meta of the game could be kind of nuts. Like the the like high level sparking zero is both like interesting and the cheapest thing you could possibly imagine at the same time. You know, it's it. But here and that, and I'm glad you said that because it is so entertaining as someone yeah, that is crazy that had the privilege <laughs> of i was first of all shout out to my boy rome okay mm -hmm. he literally was the one who put me on in the first place because originally he was supposed to commentate he pulled me aside we were we were catching up a little bit and he was like yo he's like matter of fact he's like i gotta tell you something he's like do you would you be interested in commentating for sparky's i'm like yes <laughs> so then he then he introduced me to the streamer right the the dude that was the head of that stream uh at east coast Rodan. and he was like oh yeah he's like come here by like three and uh we'll get you all set up and then so i i got introduced to tento who was my partner in crime so shout out to tento as well and we killed it we like literally like the chemistry was it was easy and it's like what what makes it so fun and, and, and at least for me, like easy as someone that's been doing commentary for like 10 years in the fighting game community, like the fact that obviously we have all this Dragon Ball knowledge and now yeah. I just get to like use that for like a Dragon Ball fighting game. Like I've done commentary for fighters. Now this is my second Dragon Ball game. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So now I'm going to look. It's I'm, different because, yeah. Yeah. Like, so I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to you now because. Because obviously JD and I, we we are, you know, we come from 
the the FGC were involved. We play other like you know Street Fighter and all these games, right? So you, right? I always look to you because this is a very interesting dynamic, right? We had this conversation. I want to say on one of the uh, previous episodes that we did here, and I asked you, like, what is it gonna take for someone like you, who's who is basically a shooter, right? Right? Like you play Call of Duty, you play like X Defiant, or you did at least. Um, mm-hmm. You you give your shooters even Halo, right? I'm the Halo guy in the family, but <clears throat> he he's not too too much with the Master Chief, right? I am okay, but that's fine. The Same. fact of the matter is is that he, whenever he picks up the sticks and he's got a gun in those hands, he's fucking killing everybody. Okay, plan so that is the plan, right? So so my question is, and again, for someone that is not invested at, in in competitive fighting games. Seeing how people are responding to Sparking Zero, does that give you any sort of interest into taking it to that competitive level? Because that's how you are. Naturally, by nature, the first thing he always asks is, is there, is there comp? Right? Yeah. Right? You always look for that. And, and, it, and, and from what competitive we... Competitive edge. And from what we can tell, there is some competitiveness to Sparking Zero. And so... I must ask, like, how does that make you feel? Do you look at the game a little differently at all? I don't know. Like, it's it's kind of a tough question. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah, I would just say it's a tough question because, fair, because I mean, especially because JD been got a hundred hours in the motherfucking game. He he even said <laughs> he even mentioned that what the the competitive is like. It has like a standard to it kind of thing. It, there's like so it's like there's like there's like. I, I guess you could say there's like a basic there's like a set play style. Like it yes. seems it seems like there's like is it cheesy? Because if it's cheesy, I, 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 would, I wouldn't even I wouldn't necessarily say cheesy, but like if you're looking at it through the lens of like a traditional fighting game, it could look like it's just cheap. Like you right, know, but but at the same because there's so many defensive mechanics that there's no true combos. Mm-hmm. So. When you're playing against the computer, you might actually be able to do combos that are saucy, like they look crazy, yeah. right? But when you're playing against people, it's less about combos and more about being able to damage output. Just just like make them guess wrong just enough to hit them with like a rush attack or to use something cheap like after image so they can't hit you. Right. And to or to use unblockable supers, like find characters that have those tools. Like right now, one of the cheapest tactics in the game is just a character who can heal. Like Yajirobe is top tier because of that. Oh, I, I, I heard about that. I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, he, he can use Sensu Bean and he heals fully. And it's like he's one of the best characters in the game, so he has to get adjusted now. You know, that's. I think crazy. he also has an unblockable with his with his rush too. Like there's like a a thing where if he hits you with it and then like. He can kind of just loop it somehow. Like I saw, I saw footage of it. I don't know how yeah. like real it is, but it's one of those games where it's like it really is just up to the player to be able to teleport or to do that perfect parry. I, f- I think mm. it's called super counter. Mm. And if you can do those things, you can basically get out of anything. Yeah, I don't know how much like for like the competitive mind. I guess like I don't know how keen I am on that. And like, you, you also have to you have to have really good reaction time too. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I mean that's cool. I, you know, it comes with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if, there, if, cool. if there's a lot of like, I mean, it's good that there's defensive mechanics, so you can't get fucked up like <laughs> so easily or well, like mm-hmm. like super combo yeah, and yeah. shit like that, like stuck. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. Like, but like what I've what I've like learned late recently, just from like the. I guess the the higher level area is that there are certain combos that put you in a certain state that rep- like is almost like a hard knockdown mm. and you can get out of it but most players don't know how. Right. So it's a little bit of an exploit where if you do like there's there's a handful of combos that instead of pressing the guard button to get out of it you have to press down on the D-pad or or not the D-pad down on the analog stick to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't know that, you're just going to be stuck in this hard knockdown and then you could just get hit with whatever, yeah. you know? And yeah. I think that right now, at least, the high level Sparking Zero is going to be 
the knowledge of those kind of things. So I, I would like I I would at least like observe it for a couple of months to see where things go and mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. how they try to adjust it because I feel like Bandai Namco might not have like like anticipated how big this game was gonna be and also how people in the FGC might be taking to it as an alternative or as like a almost like a Smash Brothers but for DBZ kind of thing where it fits it's it's like a similar niche now granted it's not smash like smash no, is no, no, different no, not at all but, <laughs> but like i think i think people in the fgc do want a game that is less sweaty but sweaty enough oh and this game can get and very it's still sweaty, sweaty. like the, the game is still comp- like when you're playing against people like you're still like you know it, it gets intense yes you know? and and that so and that's the point that i also wanted to drive home is that like with evo be, now like well it's, it's it's not recent it's not well it's not new like they have not had smash brothers at evo for a bit now and that's mainly because sony is more involved and that means that they want to just inject all of the playstation titles or games that are at least on playstation like they don't have to be exclusive but yeah, well plus nintendo is just a little and, anal, well but yeah <laughs> yeah so it's like so smash brothers has not been at evo even and even without smash brothers evo is still growing which is funny enough so it's like oh, I'm, you can only imagine how much bigger it would be if if they still had melee if they still had ultimate because they'd mm-hmm. have they'd probably have like five to ten thousand more people in attendance yeah I'm not even, and that's not even an exaggeration now sparking zero brings about a whole new audience much like i would think it would almost replace the smash audience and i'm not Mm. saying you replace them like you know they're gone and that's all you know like like a lot of fighting game community fans or a lot of fgc members i should say that play the street fighters the tekkens the mortal kombat the guilty gear right like you have a mixture of those guys that are playing Sparking Zero now. But then it's like, you're also going to have all of the anime diehards mm-hmm. that are playing this because they love Dragon Ball. But not because they play fighting games, because they play Dragon Ball games, right? And Damn. and I'll say this, and I'm sure you know who this person is. Mighty Keef, okay? Yeah. I met him at EVO this year. Nice guy. He's a he's 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 really cool in person, right? He's one of the good ones. Thank God, right? Um, and he's a really successful YouTuber. Does really funny skits for those that don't know. And so when I talked to him, I was like, "Yo, like, how's how do you think about Sparking Zero?" He's like, "Oh man, it's a fun game." And now he's he's over here tweeting, like he he I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, "I've thought about this all day, and I can't think of a reason why Sparking Zero should not be at Evo." And he's the type of guy, when he makes a post, he gets mad likes, mad comments, mad shares. Like, he'll say anything, and it gets around. He's that type of content creator. He's that type of personality. So my thing is, it's like, if you have people like him that are vouching for a game like Sparking Zero to be represented at that capacity, that's godlike. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's amazing. That's something that, you know, I'm sure the higher-ups at EVO, that when they come to take in considerations for what the the main like seven or eight game lineups are mm. sparking zero should be considered because i'm pretty sure they will get numbers if they announce sparking zero as a main game now granted jd does bring up a good point saying like you know if it's not main game it could be an official side game but if that happens and if the numbers are crazy, like it's it's shitting on all the other side games, then that's that's mm, got to ignore at that gotta, point. You got to note it. You got to take that down as a note because it's like okay, this might not be your traditional fighting game, but the fact that it, it has a big audience and it and it, it and and at its core, it is a fighting game. You know, because at the end of the day, they're gonna bring on a game that has a lot of people. I'm telling you right now. If they this if 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 out of nowhere people started picking up Naruto Storm, and that's on PlayStation, if they saw that they had a million players log in and they were playing it for the for like months, people would be, would be like, damn, <laughs> motherfuckers are playing Naruto now. Shit. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, do we want to make money? Or do we want to just rely on 
you know, the the staples, which, you know, granted, the staples are, you know, doing well enough, but it's just like, you know, Some new life. As, fi- as a fighting game community, we're trying to really show up and show out, you know, like to, to fucking shit on you shooter motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's a different type of vibe, <laughs> bro. Yeah, but look at what you guys got. You guys got you guys got people watching streams of the tournaments yeah. that get in all these subs and people are just watching and these motherfuckers are getting paid to just watch Call of Duty and they're not even playing. That's the, that's the level that the shooting community is at. It's like we're not even there yet. You know, we're kind of get we're kind of inching towards it, I feel like, but not not quite. It just has, it, for y'all it might just be cuz there there hasn't just been that one game. Like, you know what I mean? Like it just takes that one game. Yeah. Like I, I think it, it all comes down to fighting games are extremely intimidating. That's true. And I think to I think to to Uchi's point with Sparking Zero at least is like Sparking Zero is the type of game that isn't scary the way that like if someone sees Dragon Ball Fighters, even though it has like simpler inputs, they might be like, ooh, like they're no, they're not going to stand a chance against Sonic Fox, who just picks up the game and one, day one he's bodying people, right? Mm-hmm. But you play Sparking Zero, and you're playing like a an anime style, you know, kind of like not arena, but um, uh, I forgot the the genre, but like an arena style game almost, right? Or whatever. But um, you don't have that uh, execution. It's it's mostly just about timing and understanding the mechanics, like what you can do. Right. So there is like it, it's it's deep, but it might not scare somebody away the same way that a Dragon Ball Fighters would just because, oh, they see an arcade stick and they start getting scared, you know, like, cause that, that happens to a lot of people. Yeah, so nobody want to play on those stick. Yeah. So, so it's like having games like smash or like, you know, like, a, like, a, like a casual leaning game. I don't want to like, okay. Say no, like, I hear like, you. I hear you. I hear you. You know what I mean? Like a game like that is important for growing the community because it's it's the gateway drug you know you you yes. never know which one is going to be the one that and you know like they, they get just into it enough to be like oh now i want to try this other game yeah you yeah. know so i think that there would be incentive especially if it has a like if, if the game carries until then which hopefully it should i think it will like I, I feel like i feel like you know you could already argue that the people playing this game is, is probably a much more dedicated player base than with any other anime style game of this type. Right. Yeah. You know, like, cause, cause you, you know, the Naruto games come out all the time and granted, I, I, I like those games, but hmm. you don't hear about people playing and like fighting each other, like, you know, battling against each other in those games, the way that has been with this game. Yeah. You'd have to probably dig for that. Like, feel... yeah, it's, it's like extremely niche. Yeah. What were you Where, whereas like this game, it's all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. Nah, I was going to say like, I don't know, because I guess going back to what I was saying before, as far as, like, finding the one game for y'all to, like, mm-hmm. kind of get to that point, it would probably have to be, I would say, Jump Ultimate Stars. My man. <laughs> I always, I always man. come back to yeah, that. We always come back to that shit. I, I always come back to it. But it's true, though. Like, yeah, I you, feel you, like... You, you can unite the... Uh, it's like the avatar of FGC. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I feel like a game like that would bring... Everybody, a lot of yeah, pretty much everybody. That I mean, that you know yeah, I mean? like we always yeah, you know what we we really do come back to that only purely because that formula just works. It Platform be, fighters yeah. mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. hit different, and it's like Smash Brothers obviously set the precedent that obviously allowed for all of these other companies to take a chance and make their own. Like, we have Multiverses, we have Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, we have mm-hmm. Brawl Out, Bro- we have Hala. Brawlhalla, we have, um, there's another one that I'm, for some reason, not thinking at the top of my head right now, and it just had a sequel, and it was around uh, for a I know, what you, I know what you're talking about. You know what about. I'm talking, yeah, like, and I can't think of it now, of course, right? Yeah. But Jump Ultimate Stars is one of those, I guess you can call it those rare gems that I don't know how it is still on the 3DS and it has not been brought back up or revived or given, like, given the the Budokai Tenkaichi treatment, if you will, because that game 
much like the Tenkaichi series, deserves another one. And that's the second one in its line. Like, it was Jump Superstars, then it was Jump Ultimate Stars. So that's technically yeah, the second one. So, all yeah, I'm... They, they overcorrected and went into that Jump jump Stars, Victory Versus. Yeah, and, I mean... Uh, yeah, like, they, that was, like, they went in the wrong direction. I understand why yeah. they went in that direction, but if they kept that Smash Brothers aesthetic... Like, it would have done crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, like I'm sh- like like right now, Sparking Zero <laughs> has a lot of people's attention. I think it will hold hold on to everyone's attention for a very long time because, like we talked about in a recent episode, there's DLC. There's a lot. There's like over Ooh. twenty characters that's coming, yeah. right? And that's just for next year. Not and that's not to say like who else they're gonna add on top of that because I'm sure the the, the game is selling is has sold so well. They're good. There, th- this yeah. game's gonna get support for a very long time. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not even, you know, doubting that. But as far as like trying to get something to, I guess in a way, make that like fill in that 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 Smash Brothers slot where Evo. Obviously, we use Evo because Evo is the biggest fighting game tournament of the, of them all. It's the grand, it's the it's the WrestleMania, right? Like not having a platform fighter almost feels a little weird because. You have all your traditional fighters. You have your versus type, you know, with, with with fighters and whatnot. And then you have, like, your king of fighters. You have your guilty gear. You have your Tekken. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you have all your staples that you'd expect to see. But then it's just like, damn, without Smash Brothers, it just feels like there's something missing. If you, add, if you basically add back in some sort of platform fighter. Matter of fact, the funny part is Sony had one. PlayStation All-Stars. Well, yeah, yeah, PlayStation. And then, yeah. And that shit flopped, you know. <laughs> You know, all, all due respect, but it it's just like everybody keeps trying to do it. Yeah, and just can't do it the and they, same way. They just couldn't do it the same way. <laughs> but if I'm telling you, man, if they take if they take the concept of Jump Ultimate Stars and they just do all the good things out of a platform fighter and they update that roster with anyone that you'd expect to be in it nowadays, you you have you have dudes like my brother, you got dudes like us that that come together like Ryu and Cyclops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it would be perfect. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, yeah, a game like that would probably do justice <laughs> <laughs> for the fighting game uh, yeah. community and shit, but I mean, 100%. I don't know, one one other thing that kind of like, I guess, stands out to me in, in when it comes down to like the whole competitive scene and probably why shooters might out or do outdo fighting games in a sense, okay. like from a competitive standpoint is probably like the team play. Like all the yeah. co- cooperation, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Because like mm. it's it's a little diff, like it's a different vibe or feeling, I guess. Because like shooters, primarily, because there's no one v one shooters really. Like, no, see, like yeah, it's, it's not yeah. like that. It's literally team based, four v four, five v five. Yeah, shit yeah. like that. Like fighters, it's solo. It's solo, you know? solo. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, I yeah. I, I think that's interesting because yeah. like I, I think that the one v one aspect makes it so like as a player it's probably harder to get into because you're thinking about like like if you lose then it's on you 100 percent, right but, but, 100%. but, but yeah, as a yeah, yeah. But, but as like a spectator i feel like it's almost like watching boxing or watching mma or wrestling where it's like you you have your guy that you're a fan of or a character or whatever and yeah. you root for that person um so like as a spectator it could be there's one mindset but as a as a player it has a different mindset and finding the right balance yeah because you have to also care about the game in order to want to watch it it's like you have to like you can watch basketball and even if you don't you're not good at it because you've probably played basketball when you're a kid but if you never (laughs) liked playing street fighter or if you had a bad experience then you might not care you know so like it's about you know it's just about like what genre is easier to get into you know yeah but um, I did want to ask you though, like in regarding to Sparking Zero, like as a as a commentator, like what would you say was um like were some of the things that you liked about about it as a as a commentator being able to like just riff off of, you know? So far I will say I really did enjoy the differences in in players' team choices, if that makes mm. sense. Like yeah, obviously yeah. you had like your you had your 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 teams that obviously had like some characters that you you would see in a lot of people's teams. And granted, the format was also something that I liked because the the cool thing about brand new games, especially at a competitive level, is 
is that tournaments get to experiment with formats and like what works the best and like it's it's in like an a in a in a experimental phase right now and so when we played we did like 5v5 right like you know so that mm-hmm. way you had like your five characters and then you can just let it mm-hmm. rock right now those matches if you're you know if you're just playing around doesn't you don't it doesn't really like you don't consider the time that yeah. goes into a fight <laughs> but when you're when you're at a tournament dude even though it was three characters a team those matches could last a long time so i did like that even though it was three on three um the matches like you would sometimes forget like like oh my god like they have one character left or it's like Mm -hmm. they're bum rushing with just their solo with one character Mm -hmm. and like you can switch like you can active switch and all that especially if you're trying to continue a combo but everybody like has their own life bar anyway so it's like there's a lot of strategy, and that's like what I really enjoy is seeing how people really come into the game and what they how they want to play it, and obviously seeing like how far that takes them because like you you see certain play styles where it's like you got people that are meter managing like crazy. <laughs> it's like it's one thing in fighting games where it's like you just have an EX bar and maybe like another bar for like in like Street Fighter's case like for you know for like drive rush and like drive impact and all that kind of stuff but like in this game it's like you have your meter and then you have like the number that represents like last stocks yeah yo yeah and then you have your key yep and then you have the switch timer yep and the transformation tokens yep and when you <laughs> and go you're sparking all mode that depending on who you put yep yeah so it's like there's so much there's so many elements to it and i appreciate that because again, it gives a lot of the players like more expression to show us what this game can really look like at a high level. And I was again grateful enough um, and lucky enough to call top eight action. So I got to see the best of the best at this venue. And they were doing things like this is one guy, I, I forget their names, but like the one dude, the way he was playing was he was like, he was like strafing. He was, like, he was going back and forth, like doing a co- couple key blasts, couple key blasts, charge, couple key blasts. They would go in, go out. They would, you know, and then like obviously they would try to get their hits in. But what makes the game so exciting is when you have motherfuckers going neck and neck, just dodging every fucking move. Like mm-hmm. it's like, and, and, and it turns with a hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. And like it's like it's like chung 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 like everyone is just like you're just vanishing every attack. It's like if you have the meter for it and you have the timing, all you have to hit the button, hit the button, hit the button, hit the button. <laughs> and it and it and it's constant time, and the crowd gets into it, a commentary gets excited. It's like I'll I can never get tired calling a a, a Spark and Zero tournament. I could probably let that shit rock all day because that's how exciting the game is. Mm. And then on top of that. Take what I just said. Now apply it to moments where you have, I think it was, I don't know, I don't remember what the match was, but you had a dude using, I think it was Frieza or Broly, and he was doing like this big ass death ball, covers the whole screen kind of shit. The fucking opponent vanished every hit that he would have been hit with. So all you saw was his character, choom, 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 like in place, avoiding every hit. And I was like, I didn't even think that was possible. Mm-hmm. This game, Yo, I'm telling I, you, you. You, you. You want me to tell you some shit that was crazy? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, back in the day with Tenkaichi 2. So remember, I'm, I'm an OG with this stuff. Like, yeah. So back in the day, um, I used to follow, follow a dude. His name is Sprawlers. He was actually a Smash player as well. Mm-hmm. But he, he used to make fan fiction as well. Okay, but he nice. he used to also play like he would play like the early competitive Tenkaichi 2. And I saw him. That's when I realized this game was crazy because I saw him dodge a, the super explosive wave. Like, you yes. know, you know how they have those big explosions. Yes. So back back in the old games, it was like multi hit explosions. Right. And like he like teleported up and then he just manually teleported each one. And I was like, yo, this game is sick. Cause like, cause that was like actually crazy to see somebody pull that off in 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 a match. 
that is literally the equivalent of mm-hmm. when Daigo parried all of Justin Wong's Chun Li super kicks from Third Strike yeah, from back it's, in the it's day. It's basically like the Evo version, moment yeah. thirty four when literally it's like Justin was about to win, and he loads up super and Chun Li super is like where she does like the fucking a million kicks, a million kicks, and Daigo parried psh, 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 every single kick that's the equivalent for sparking zero except it's way fucking more extreme and probably way more like time like specific like i'm telling you this game has every reason to be featured at high stakes tournaments that are not just like for their own like imagine if they had like an event like almost like ceo taku like where it's like anime centric games like, that would no. actually be yeah. I think that would be a good showcase for it at least, just to just to see what how people feel. Yeah, but like, I'm yeah, it, could be yeah. You know. it, it, I'm like that would you're right, but I'm just saying. I, I just I just mean like to like as a as a like if it's gonna prove its point for oh Evo, right 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 okay it would yeah, be yeah, yeah. at a you know what I mean yeah yeah all right sounds good. Well, what a warm up right because that was basically half the show right there. So good shit. <laughs> But yeah, no, I love talking Spark and Zero and like the the potential of the future of it and everything like that. But for those that have been waiting, it is now time for your question of the day. Okay. So I asked for those that were paying attention because, you know, check out the socials, right? Do you think Namekians and potentially Saiyans went to universe 6 and 7 from the demon realm. So, I will provide some extra context, okay? So, I, while working, was... I've, of course, I'm always in my thoughts. I'm, like, thinking, you know, I'm thinking back on what we saw episode 1, episode 2 of Dragon Ball Daima. And, you know, even, even thinking back to, like, the things that we talked about here and with Joey and everything like mm-hmm. that, all the theories and stuff. And then... I go in and I watch or li- at least listen to Geekdom's recent videos and streams, right? And, of course, you know, he's very insightful, so shouts to Geekdom. It goes without saying. We're probably going to have to bring him back on here uh, sooner than later, especially now that we have new stuff to talk about. Um, and he's been doing a lot of different breakdown videos and just discussions. He had Jordan the Dragon Lee, another freaking another homie. We're going to bring his ass on here. He already told me. He's like, yo, he's like, you ever need me on full power? I got you. Oh, it's like, wait, wait. <laughs> There it is. So he said he said he'll come on a full power podcast as well. So we have to bring Jordan on. But like, like when so they they had a stream recently, and they talked about how originally in an interview Toriyama stated that the demon realm was something that existed within the same universe, which is obviously Universe Seven, right? So that old information implied to us fans that this demon realm belonged to universe seven which also implies that there could be other demon realms that belong to other universes Mm -hmm. however with the recent episode two that dropped it seems like that the demon realm is not just exclusive to universe seven that the demon realm exists outside of said universe and in fact it exists outside of all all the universes so it kind of brings us to what we were already talking about with the already we know that the namekians came from the demon realm and at some point they escaped and whatnot and then at least in universe 7 the story goes they found namek now you can only imagine something similar must have happened to universe 6 because we through the dragon ball super turn of power we learned that there was other Namekians, there was other Saiyans, right, mm-hmm. that went to the, a separate universe. So, if we're to believe, based on the the context now, this new context, that univ- the, the demon realm is shared amongst, and it can almost act like one of those, like, central hubs to then go to, you know, this universe, that universe, whatever. So, bring it back to the question to ask it one more time. Do you think Namekians and potentially Saiyans went to universe six and seven from the demon realm so who wants to go first you're good Um, good. yeah i'll I'll start (laughs) all right let's go um so for namekians specifically i think it's obvious right i think yes because um 
they kind of like hinted at it through the dialogue like they're basically you know like almost everybody with pointy ears might have like spawned from the demon realm um and we do you know even though like we've become like uh attached to the namekians and piccolo and all that like we do know that they have like some weird like dark origins and there's a lot of stuff going on with that new na- na- namek that uh is from the demon realm right uh I think it's pretty safe to say that they probably originated there and then they spread out from there because they, you know, probably didn't like what was going on with Demon King Deborah or, uh, uh, what was it? Abura. Abura. Yep, his dad's yeah, name is Abura. Abura Kadabra. Abura Kadabra. <laughs> yeah, Abura Kadabra. You know? There's gotta be an Alakazam <laughs> so, somewhere in there, right? Yeah, yeah, right? So, probably the grandpa. I don't um, know. that'd be funny. Yeah. Um, but. So, so for for Namekians, I definitely think that's the case. And then um, them going to Universe Six, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, like since the Demon Realm does exist outside of a specific universe, I think it's pretty you know safe to say that some of them could have spread out to different parts of the universe. I, I'm not necessarily sure how it would factor in, but I do feel like just with the with the lore of the Dragon Balls in general, it makes a lot of sense because it would kind of, you know, since the Namekians are so intrinsically tied to the Dragon Balls, right? it would make sense that they exist. And, you know, like, if they came from there, then it would make sense that they are just kind of... Scattered and shit. You know, every, scattered around. Right. Um, but, but their origin point would be from the Demon Realm, and they could probably use that to tie into some of the stuff that's about to happen in this show. Like I know Piccolo will be, you know, in the trenches, so you know yep. hopefully we'll get some like lore dumps. Oh yeah. Um as as for the sands, I don't think so. However, the I think you guys mentioned this on your last podcast or whatever, but the whole thing about the tails as a curse, <laughs> that's a cool theory. Mm-hmm. I like to the to almost to the point where I'm like that would that would be the perfect way. Like just like you said, I think you guys said this, but mm-hmm. it's it's like once you said this, I kind of adopted this as my theory because <laughs> yeah. it was like it, like it, it's the perfect way for them to introduce a form and have it not be in super exactly because I think the biggest question now is like oh how will they introduce new stuff if it doesn't matter once super got there because that just nullifies everything that happened in super. But if it's Demon Realm exclusive right. and you could only access it in the Demon Realm, then why not have these these like new takes that you could only access in the Demon Realm? And it's not like we've seen them go to the Demon Realm since then. Yeah, or mention it. And if yeah, so why not? Like it, I, I'm I'm into that idea just for the the chaos that it'll mm-hmm. bring. Like I I want to see. <laughs> some crazy stuff happen and you know like plus it'll always be exciting like i feel like um honestly like the fact that daima characters are sparking zero dlc kind of leads me to believe that there has to be some kind of secret that they're holding in terms of play like you know fighting characters because it's not like Bulma is going to be playable or Chi Chi nah, or you know baby goten and trunks <laughs> as funny as that would be but like you know that there's going to be characters you're going to fight as and you know you got Piccolo, you got Trunks, you got that new dude um Oh, Glorio? Sorry, not Trunks. Uh, not I said Piccolo, Vegeta, uh Glorio, the transformations, but like there's got to be a few more since there's two Dima packs. <laughs> so as the story progresses, uh-huh. yeah. So I, I like I'm I'm very intrigued to see where the story goes in that regard. But but for right now, I would say you know, um, I definitely think the Namekians are gonna get some some lore dumps for the, from the demon uh, demon realm. Yeah, Saiyans. I do feel like there's a possibility of there being some stuff there, but I don't think that Saiyans originated there. Okay, but um. I'm curious about this curse theory. Yeah. Because, you know, again, like the Saiyans have a history of being like people trying to hold them down. So what way to like put kind of stint their growth than make them, you know, have a hard time controlling their power. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the, uh, like Kale and Cauliflower and stuff. They didn't have tails, did they? No, no, did no they, they did. 
They did. They did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, again, it could be tied to all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you got any uh, extra things to add there? I don't think so. Honestly, like I'm just trying to let the story kind of progress, and then I'll yeah. have probably more thoughts or yeah. um, conspiracies <laughs> within the whole demon realm shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm content with the with the the theory that we we started we started in a sense, you know, with the whole tail shit and yeah, where it could potentially lead to what it means, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um. So that's a, I think that's as far as I'll go at the moment. Uh uh-huh. Unless something else spurs you know mm-hmm. yeah comes up type thing but yeah all right so yeah, we're still yeah we're still only like two episodes yeah, it's only two in. episodes like, so. the three episodes is where you get like a good sense so i'm I'm very excited for friday <laughs> yeah so so i'm gonna now read some responses that we got from people um so this of course comes from the patreon First and foremost, so again, a reminder, if you are a thriving Ozaru over on the Patreon at any tier, you will have your answers read first before everybody else. Okay. Um, so this comes from our boy Worse Than a Demon. He says, yes, I do think so. I even think they moved from another universe since there is three realms, which I also forget mm-hmm. that the demon realm is, there's three realms. Yeah, that's a realm. Like, it's like, I, I want to almost think of it as three floors. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's three levels to the demon realm. And, yeah, like, it, it really does make this very interesting. And funny enough, um, I feel like I've mentioned this before, but I guess I'll say it again. Like, Dragon Ball Daima, so far, the way they've been setting it up and giving it to us, it's it feels so much like a JRPG. Do you, do you think the demon realm, um, since you're saying there's floors to this shit, connects to hell? Oh, so the funny, okay, so the, that's a good question. The funny thing is, is that they've made it very uh, clear, at least Geekdom has mentioned it. He said this several times, is that hell <clears throat> is a separate yeah. place altogether. I would figure that. Yeah, so to not so not to confuse the demon realm with hell, those are completely do, mm-hmm. two separate places. Um, places. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. It, it, be it, it would be. It would be crazy. A hundred percent. Let me just check to see. Hold on. I'm trying to. Here we go. So, I'm looking at YouTube. I don't think anyone answered it there. Let me just check Instagram real fast. <clears throat> nope, I don't see anyone on there. Let me check Twitter. I'll probably end up cutting this part out. And then uh, I'll go into my own thoughts. Bron James. Bron, I really <laughs> have the game on right now. Oh, my God. Dang. Okay. All right, hold on. So I'm going to bring it back now. Ready? Excellent. So, oh, wait. Actually, I should have so as far as like what I think, right? To answer to answer the question that I put out there, I will say that it's very hard for me not to think this because obviously that's why I generated the question in the first place. And the fact that like I'm really going with our theory of yeah. as as far because the thing is obviously we already know that the Mechians are confirmed to be part of the demon realm, right? They also made it made it a point to state that not everyone with pointy ears is from the demon realm, but most are. Okay? Mm. So what does that tell you? That tell you that a lot of characters that we have seen already, like the Heaters, like Moro, mm. they could all be from the demon realm. I didn't even think about that. But we that. just don't see them but, until... Well, yeah, obviously we don't see them until later in the story, but like, you know, the, the, the point is, is that the pointy ears is a very definitive feature that seems to be shared amongst all personnel that come from the demon realm. But, you know, like, like they stated, not everyone, but, you know, I think, I think that is a subtle way for them to deviate their thoughts or not their thoughts there. That is a way for them to deviate our thoughts into automatically assuming like, Oh, what about this? What about this? And, and that kind of hides the Saiyans in a way. Because I think, I really think that that's going to be the twist of Daima. Is that Saiyan, not only did the Mechians come from the Demon Realm, Saiyans came from the Demon Realm. 
because of the curse. Or, you know, maybe they didn't have to necessarily come from the demon realm. But at some point, there were Saiyans that ended up there and they were cursed. Or somebody cursed them. It was a demon realm type curse that if, you know, they transform or when they transform, obviously they'll have great power. But those tails are their big weakness. And, you know, them turning into these great apes, these Ozarus, it is almost like those powers are almost demonic. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah. like the fact that Piccolo back in the day was training Gohan to basically be a part of his demon clan. It's like, bro, and now you look at the what happens to Gohan. My man brought out beast mode. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of connecting little dots that you can when you really pay attention. And again, I really, I really want to emphasize that Geekdom and Jordan did a very, very good detailed discussion about all this in their recent stream. Because every Sunday, Geekdom has what he calls the Super Magic Show. And they and it's basically like a Daimo review like live show or live stream. And they would talk, you know, and jo- and the thing with Jordan is that his knowledge goes so much deeper because he connects everything to Journey to the West. Mm. So whenever he comes on, he will be able to fill in all these blanks that I'm leaving out right now because he like literally anything that happens in in, in, in any 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 part of Dragon Ball, he will literally be like, yeah, this is this is similar to what happens in Journey to the West, and. This happened. So because of this, this could be something that we see in Dragon Ball Daima, in Dragon Ball Super, and so on and so forth. So it's that it's that knowledge that I'm not gonna lie. I already messaged him. I'm like, bro, give me the comic for for freaking Journey to the West. Because a lot of people that have read um Journey to the West content, they have already confirmed that the easiest way to get into it and to understand the premise of the whole story is to just read the comic because there's there's literature for it there's comics and now you could play the wukong game yeah and but apparently yo guess what i found out jd that the wukong game is a sequel to what happens in fucking journey to the west oh yeah so it's like after i didn't even realize yeah, that and exactly. i thought it was like a retelling so in a way i'm actually kind of happy that I didn't get it day one and play it already because now that I know that, it makes me want to read the comic first. Mm. But you know, but you know, me me and playing games nowadays is is so difficult yeah. um, as it is. So yeah, guys, let us know what you guys think about this 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 outstanding or ongoing theory of you know whether or not if you believe that the Namekians or if if the demon realm is truly like. A, a a realm that exists outside of all of the universes and that could explain how the Namekians at least went from the demon realm to universe 6 and 7 I want to hear you guys thoughts as to why they dispersed how they split up if there was some sort of like altercation or something like that let's get creative with it and then as a as a cherry on top Something similar happened to the Saiyans as well. Because, of course, gotta shout them out. And with that, we have time for one more segment. And I'm so glad to be doing this live right here on these episodes. We are now bringing on Chi-Chi's A Scholarship. Get out your pens. Get out your pads. Get you something to write with. Because tonight... This is the sixth class that will now be in session. And um, as per and, and I mentioned this before, and I'll and I'll say this uh, now for everybody that is uh, listening or watching this. I'm going to be keeping track of all of the points, and we will have a definitive winner by the end of the year. And then once the new year starts, we're gonna reset it and it'll be happening every month like I originally intended. Um, because obviously at that point, um, we will have more of a frequent, like, because JD will be on regularly, just like with you and just like with Joey and everything like that. So that way, it'll it'll seem more fair because right now the leaderboard is is kind of cracked <laughs> and uh, it doesn't really make uh, too much sense. So okay, so let's go. So question number one: True or false? In Dragon Ball Daima, Glorio referred to his flying vehicle as a spaceship. True or false? Okay. 
Question number two. What is three times 3,000? What is three times 3,000? Question number three. Which of the following is a conductor of electricity? You have four options. Rubber, wood, copper, or glass? Which of the following is a conductor of electricity? Rubber, wood, copper, or glass? And the final and fourth question for this week. And this, you have, there's, there's potential to get a bonus point out of this question, okay? So during Dragon Ball Daima Episode 2, Goku was struggling with his range when training. What did he then go out and search for? So here's where the bonus point comes in. If you give me the English name of this item, you will obviously get the question right. If you also give me the Japanese name of this item, you will get a full extra bonus point. So you potentially could get five out of four this week. Okay? So everyone good on their uh, responses? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I think so. All right, so question number one. True or false? In Dragon Ball Daima, Glory referred to his flying vehicle as a spaceship. The answer is true. <laughs> you got it wrong. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> Sorry to hear fuck about that spaceship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question number two. What is three times 3,000? The answer is 9,000. I knew you did that. Yeah, I was like, this uh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> had that's to. Like, that's I like added that shit. Right? Multiply it. I'm very on theme Ooh. with these questions, right? Hey. <laughs> All right. So people outside. Oh. <laughs> So which of the question number three? So which of the following is a conductor of electricity? The options were rubber, wood, copper, glass. The answer is copper. Ha <laughs> ha! Dang it! <laughs> Very good. All right, and the the fourth and final question: During Dragon Ball Daima episode two, Goku was struggling with his range when training. What did he then go out and search for? The correct answer is power pole. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the bonus is the Nyoibo. Oh, uh, okay. See, I forgot the Japanese name. <laughs> See, I just called it that shtick. Do you even call it the power pole? Oh. Nope. You called it that stick? That shtick. You're incorrect. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to guess no power pole. You forgot that. the power pole name? I ain't going to call it no power pole. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. It's, that, what it, it's that shtick. You know, it, it's, it's <laughs> that shtick. <laughs> oh, wow, I got I got my two though. Okay, so you I got, got one two out of four. All I right, so 50. all right, so two out of four for brother Uch, and then Jade, you got four out of four. Yeah, four out of hey, four. Hey, congratulations with that perfect score. Very good. Just missed a bonus point, but you know. Eh, hey, man, it's all right. It's all good. I, I I mostly watch English dub Dragon Ball. You know. No, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> So I had to ask, and then of Noibo, course, got it. Yeah, no, Noibo. It's spelled. I'll, I'll spell it for you too. It's spelled N Y O I B O. Uh, Noibo. No, Noibo. Yep. Yep. That's the uh, Japanese name for the power pole. And now, of course, as always, it is now that time for your Patreon shout out. <laughs> okay. If you want to hear your name shouted out at the end of these, you already know what to do. Patreon.com forward slash Full Power Podcast. Are you ready, sir, for yeah. these ad libs? Let's go, let's go right now with the Giante Sheridan. Giante. Anthony Parker. Park that bit. Lord Payne. Pain it is not. We're sending the demon. Demon time, demon time. Dante TX. Suck it. Jared Rivera. Jared Rivera. Mr. Back again once again. Back again once again. Odd man out. Never count him out. Philly Hamble. Smack that bitch. Soul Awakens. Wake your ass up. Super Saiyan Saul. Super Saiyan, Super Shit. Travis Boyette. Boyette. Vegeta Uchiha. Vegeta Uchiha. And we got one more. Let's give a big shout out to our boy with the... Oh! Yeah. He's the only one. <laughs> Land of the Rising Sun. Yes. <laughs> He's our fucking boy. Everybody stand up. Give it up for our man. Juice. 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 All right. Everybody get out your fucking ice. Yeah! <laughs> Hit him up! Alright, guys. 
And I know you don't want to miss out on these hype-ass Patreon shouts. What other podcast do you know shouting out the supporters in such a way? You get your extra content, you get your extra episodes, your behind the scenes, your Discord, your 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 comments read first, that priority, and then you get clips like this. What's happening, everybody? You already know what it is. It's what you're paying for. The tier three, the Super Saiyan three, the thriving Ozarus. It's not meant to be an interview, but you already know what it is. We've been hyping it up. This is Kami's Cookout. Putting that extra love in my shit, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know about this, but you're gonna learn today. Y'all learn today. Yeah, you guys not gonna wanna miss out on that Kami's Cookout, okay? Kami's Cookout coming very, very soon. It is, uh, of course, being in the works. And we also have some other things. Speaking of Sparking Zero, I know JD's gonna be involved in that one. And uh, I will start announcing this out to everyone now publicly that we will be having for the very first time, and hopefully this is a regular thing, the Tournament of Full Power. Now, if you're wondering what the Tournament of Full Power is, well, much like the Tournament of Power, this will be an exclusive invitational tournament that will be featuring some folks from the Full Power Podcast, some folks that you might recognize over on YouTube and the social media and other things. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. It's going to be a single elimination tournament with a draft, which means that everyone's teams are going to be looking pretty crazy. We will have a roulette system. Much like how in all the uh, Budokai or the Tenkaichi Budokais in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball, where you remember how they like picked a number out of a fucking thing mm. and then like that decided the seating. Well, that number will decide who gets to pick first, second, third, and so on and so forth. So make sure you guys are staying tuned for that and looking forward to the Terminal Full Power coming up um, soon, hopefully, at some point this year. And uh, Kami's Cookout Episode 1 will be dropping very soon, so look out for that. Um, and, of course, on Mondays is when we release your other episode. If you have paid attention to the episode numbers, you might realize, how come we're only seeing the even numbers or the odd numbers? Well, that's because the other number is on Mondays. So make sure you get your full fill of the Full Power Podcast. Become a thriving Ozaru. Support us in every way, which way that you can. And uh, we're open to, like, subject, topic ideas and all that kind of good stuff. So... Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going to be talking about Daima once, you know, new episodes come out and everything like that. So, Brother Ooze, what do you got left for the people at home? Stay fresh, stay clean, get yourself a nice fucking clone. Ood. Okay, very nice. <laughs> I will ding that and applause it. JD, what do you have left for the people at home? Uh, just, you know, play Sparking Zero, Games Fire. That's fair enough for me. probably already are. <laughs> yeah, probably already are, right? And then as for me, guys, make sure you are staying up staying positive, and staying healthy, all right? Because, you know, we're all going through some shit, but it is that passion, it is that fire, and it is the will of all of that that will keep us going forward. And make sure you're enjoying yourself and get some good sleep, okay? That's what I have for y'all. So, as always, it's been your boy, Ooch, the Lethal Ice Man, Brother Ooch, my man with the Morpher, Jay Dizzle. Represent powers and academia. Make sure you guys take care of yourselves. Make sure you power protect. Keep it locked loaded right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, and stay the hell inside. And we'll see y'all next time. Yo,